Shea butter is one of my all time favorite ingredients and I know I am not alone in that. So today's video is all about shea butter. What it is, what to make with it, how to work with it, formulation tips and tricks. Let's get started. Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, cosmetic formulator and shea butter lover extraordinaire. Shea butter was actually one of the very first cosmetic ingredients that I ever bought. I think it was the third after argan oil and beeswax. I picked up a small tub of it at the St. Lawrence Market in Toronto well over a decade ago, and it was love at first slathering. This gorgeous butter is a DIY formulating staple, and so I wanted to do a really good deep dive into it. We're going to begin with an interview with Gifty from Baraka Shea Butter to learn about where shea butter comes from and how it is made. Up next, I'll be talking about some formulation considerations when making skincare products with shea butter. And then I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite formulations that you can make with shea butter. A big thank you to Baraka Shea Butter for sponsoring this video and the blog post. As a reminder, there are timestamps in this video. So if you go down to the description box below, you can click on the different timestamps. They're all labeled so you can navigate through the video at your pleasure. <laughs> Now let's get to the interview. Wow, Marie, thank you so much uh, for having me and for this, uh, and, and really lovely to meet you in person. I, I mean... <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sponsoring this video and for you know being our shea expert and for you know teaching us more about one of my all-time favorite ingredients. So I wanted to start off with a bit of a uh, an introduction to Baraka Shea Butter. Could you tell us about Baraka, please? Yeah, so Baraka is, uh, in, in my language, the word means thank you. And uh, the reason why we chose this name for the company is because the business was inspired by the women in my community. Baraka has been an offshoot of several steps. When we started, I called it Shea Care because it was about caring. And then we moved off to Shea Butter Market and then we moved on to Baraka. We always had the theme of working with the women because they inspired it. The Shea Butter business in our family came to be because Wayne was doing a lot of work. Wayne, who is my, my partner, my husband, and my business partner, was doing a lot of work in Ghana. And uh, every time he came back, there was Shea Butter, the care package for me. And when we went back, we went often because of his work. I brought stuff for the women. And I think, you know, you bring stuff because you think, oh, they need this, they need that. And if I can bring it, I brought it. I said, okay, when I come next time, what shall I bring? And it was dead quiet. It was like, ah, we then one of the elders said they didn't need anything. And I thought, really? You mean I've been carting all this stuff here for nothing? And I said, well, what do you mean by you don't need anything? They, and then one other one said, we just want to work. And I thought, well, that's weird. They all work. You all work. What do you mean by you want to work? Well, we make very little money for our work. And my oldest sister was there and she said, well, what they mean is they want opportunity, not just work opportunity to do better. And I said, well, it's not practical. It's not possible. If only they knew I live in Mill Bay, it's never going to happen. But you know, they planted that seed and uh, basically in, in further conversations, it was clear that, you know, they work, especially every one of them that makes made shea butter, but they got very little money for their hard work. So I think it was three years actually after this conversation, it was definitely a few years after, where I was sitting in front of my TV and I saw Nivea had shea butter in their product. And they were, that's what they were advertised. And I thought, oh my God, you know, all these women, hey, what if? And so I was very excited and I spoke to Wayne and I said, you know, what if we organize the women and they, and what if I sold shea butter here? And Wayne being the strategic business thinker, he was right on it and he had lots of ideas. And yeah, so we decided that I would bring shea butter, we'll would would get shea butter from these women and I would sell it in North America. And then there was coming up with a name and you know, in, in, my, in my culture, thank you is a big thing. We always wanna thank the women for their hard work and for always providing, doing the, absolute best to give us good quality shea butter and they want to thank us for opportunity you know for trying to create that opportunity and so we thought that 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 name 
was really a good one for everybody, for all concerned. And there was a proof, I mean, there was trial there. What well, about this name? Uh, actually, in our language, is Baraka, but uh, easier for you to say Baraka. So anyway, that's how it came to be. And that was the long story about how we came to Baraka. So where did <laughs> shea butter come from? So shea butter comes from the seed of a fruit. This is another way that people uh, misunderstand. They think it's a nut, but we actually eat the fruit and the pit of the fruit is what the oil is extracted from. And in our language, the fruit is called tama. What does it taste like? Tama, it is, um, the closest thing is the persimmon. And it's my absolute favorite fruit. I love shea season because as children, we were also, we were taught to when you ate your shea fruit, you put, there was always a basket in the house that you all threw your seeds in. So the seeds then are collected the, the sun dried and then the husk, it's got a husk around it and, the, and then it's dehusked. And then the seed of the fruit is roasted over wood fire. They do them in these big pots and then they crush, they crush the seed. So once it's, it's toasted, it's, um, it's, easy, it's easy to crush. And then the, the once it's crushed, it's ground into the, a paste. And the paste is is mixed with water and then churned. And so it is very labor intensive. Shea season is in starts in May, June, and it's the rainy season. It will come out of the dry season. And everybody, the women, when they're making shea butter, they when they're pounding or de-husking, they sing. So there's a lot of music. There's a lot of, and it, and it's also community work. No one woman will make shea butter. Even for the household consumption, they will get two, three, four women together and say, let's make shea butter for cooking for the household. But when, when they go to market with it, they group together and they make it. And there's always uh, the pounder. I just, you know, I, the pounding of the shea seeds is done to rhythmic music is really lovely time of year where geographically do the shea fruit and the shea tree uh, grow yeah so shea, shea trees grow throughout the sahel ghana burkina faso togo mali most of west africa but only in the dry parts of, of the region a little bit of shea butter grows in sudan and uganda and it's a totally different shea butter the makeup is a it's very different from what you get in West Africa. But all over the Sahel, we have shea trees. When you drive from the south of Ghana, I, I know when I've hit the north, when I start to see shea trees, they're everywhere. When you go shopping for shea butter, you'll often find you know, refined and unrefined, raw, handcrafted, organic, lots of different terms describing all kinds of different shea butter that you can buy. So could you walk us through what those different terms mean and you know what how that's going to Kind of affect you know what what you're buying right like what are you right. gonna get if you order uh, a refined versus an unrefined or a handcrafted versus an organic right because shea butter has a nutty smooth natural pure shea butter has a nutty smoky smell to it and the smoky is from the process i described the nutty is from just the chemical composition of the product so when you have a combination of that, and I always say to people, you can tell your shea butter is really real when, or, or unrefined, when you smell that nutty smoky scent. You get a little bit of smoke, sometimes a lot of smoke. When shea butter first came onto the market, the cosmetics industry loved the, loved the ingredient, but did not like that smell. So they then decided to refine it like everything else. But, but through the refining process, you get a white, so the refined shea butter is almost, to me, lifeless. That's what I describe it as. It has no smell. It's just, and, and most of it is almost clinical looking. It's, it's white in color. Pure shea butter is off-white and what you call ivory in color. So that's the difference between the refined and the unrefined. And then you have the organic, and non-organic and in some places uh, depending on where you are there's been a lot of 
to help farmers. There was all this education about fertilizers and using fertilizers to grow food. So you get in some communities where they spray fertilizers to increase the yield of crops. So of course, in, in organic production, we don't want any chemicals in the product. So there are communities, there are areas where they use no pesticides, no fertilizer in any of their farming. You know, they do the traditional farmers. And, and so there are areas where we can collect at least Baraka's uh, organic shea butter. We're collecting seeds or we're working with the women. I'm not personally collecting any seeds, but the women are. We're working with villages where uh, in communities where there's no spraying of pesticides. And so we're getting the seeds from there. And then we have processes that apply for organic certification. So when we talk about, you know, the appearance of shea butter, so you talk about how refined shea butter is bleached and so it's very, very white. And we talk about how unrefined shea butter is this sort of off-white color. What about yellow shea butter? Yeah, so yellow shea butter somehow got uh, a very popular traction in North America. And people think that there's always yellow shea butter. Sometimes with the natural organic shea butter, when it's made, sometimes when the seeds are picked early on in the season, sometimes you get from the young seeds a yellowish color to your shea butter. But generally what we get in my community is off-white. Every now and then I have seen them make shea butter that's totally yellow. It's almost that light yellowish buttery color. That is not always the case throughout the season. In North America, I think a few people got hold of that buttery yellow shea butter and they had in their heads that that's all they wanted. And so, in some communities, they started to dye the shea butter with a plant. But if you're consistently getting that color yellow shea butter, it's dyed and it's dyed and it's plant dyed. It's a natural dye, but it's dyed. So it's good for people to keep in mind that, you know, all natural ingredients vary in scent and color throughout this, like throughout the season and, and uh, from you know, where it's produced and from batch to batch and so some level of variation is to be expected when something is is handcrafted from right. materials like that sometimes you get that light yellowish tinge or mostly you get the ivory the general thinking would be that if you're seeing a product that is being advertised as yellow shea butter that's definitely going to be dyed because it's not reliable enough Otherwise. That's exactly it. So, of course, shea butter has become very popular in the last decade or so. I should remember the first time I discovered it. I, I bought it at the St. Lawrence Market, and uh, I don't, I don't think I knew much of anything about it. And the person who sold it to me sold it to me in a little tub, and uh, they melted it and poured it into the tub, and it had become quite grainy in the intervening time. And I had really no idea I, what I was, what I was looking for. This is, you know, well before Humblebee and me existed. So when you are out shopping for shea butter, how can you recognize a high quality product? And especially when you're shopping online, because you know, with so many of the ingredients that we use in cosmetics, shopping online is, is really the, the way to go. So how can you tell you're getting high quality shea butter? So, I, you know, um, with no judgment to be made, some people are looking for that perfect clinical uh, product if that's what you're looking for then you have to go with the refined if you're looking for unrefined natural pure shea butter you want to be of course you cannot smell it but you can see like on our side we mentioned that there's a nutty smoky scent to our shea butter uh so there's a clue there for you know and some people say Oh, shea butter is, what the shea butter, I was told shea butter is supposed to smell bad. And I say to them, no, it's not supposed to smell bad. We eat it. It's not supposed to have a pungent smell to it. If it does, it's because uh, I mentioned the processes of making shea butter. They dehusk it, they uh, toast it. Well, when, when they dehusk it, they dry the seed. They want, it has to be very dry. They want all the moisture out of the seed. They toast it. If that moisture is not taken out completely or it's not well dried, when the product in the final stage, you get the smell. 
which is very unpleasant. And that's because, so I can tell not well-made shea butter. There was no patience applied. It's not supposed to have a pinyin smell. It's supposed to be nutty and smoky. Those two are the good smells of shea butter and the smoky just from the processes. Otherwise you get a nutty smell to it. And of course the refined, you get no smell whatsoever. It's just bland. Um, so those, those are the things to watch for that is supposed to be nutty, smoky, and you know, rancidity. That's the other thing. People say, I bought my shea butter and it smell rancid. Well, if it smell rancid, rancid is old. It's like any old oil. Sometimes people ask me what rancid smells like. And so some of the things that I tell people to think of is like uh, old crayons can sometimes have that rancid smell. That's right. Or, or if you found like a, a jar of nuts at the back of your pantry that you forgot you had and you open that up, that is usually that's the that's the one that reminds me of rancid the jar of nuts you open it and say like, ooh. for our last question i'd like to ask what what's your favorite thing uh skincare thing uh to make with shea butter what 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 just gets you so excited to, to make with shea butter? oh my goodness there is there is so much i mean i love shea butter everything of course but one of the things that i have loved about shea butter well, can I pick two? <laughs> I love shea butter in my soap because soap can be so drying, but shea butter makes it so nice and creamy. And then of course, I like my pure shea butter on my face and on my heel. My feet, I hate dry heels. And that's, that's really from growing up in the, in the Sahel. You know, in the Hamatan, the Hamatan is so harsh that your feet will literally just crack. They just crack. And so as kids, they would say, put that shea butter on your heels. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Gifty, for taking the time to, to chat with me about shea butter. I learned a lot today. And thank you so much, Baraka, to you all that you do thank you to everybody for watching and if you are looking to buy some really beautiful shea butter make sure you check out baraka shea butter i will be sure to include a link to their website they sell to both canada and the united states so i'll make sure to include a link to that in the description box below this video as well as a coupon code that they have shared with me so you can save a little bit of money on your Super. thank you I just okay, okay. Whenever we formulate with an ingredient, we want to you know, take into consideration the things that it's going to bring to our formulations. And so with shea butter, there are a couple characteristics of shea butter that you're going to want to keep in mind as you formulate and then perhaps work to counter or work with to create the product of your dreams. Because shea butter is a really rich, thick, slow absorbing butter, you really do need to keep that in mind as you're formulating with it. If you are designing a formulation or working on a formulation that has a lot of shea butter in it, you should expect that that final formulation is going to exhibit a lot of the characteristics of shea butter, so it will also be rich and thick and slow absorbing. If you would like to create lighter, faster absorbing formulations using shea butter, these are some of my favorite tips and tricks. If you are creating an anhydrous formulation like a body butter or a body butter bar, you can look at incorporating something that will help it feel a bit lighter. So one of my favorites that's very accessible is some cornstarch, but you can also use an ultralight ester like isopropyl muristate. How much you want to use will definitely vary with the formulation and your personal preferences, but I would start around 10% and do some experiments and see what you think. You can also blend shea butter with lighter feeling butters. So my favorite for this purpose is mango butter because it has an almost dry touch finish on the skin. So it really helps balance out that heavier feel of shea butter. You can also use shea butter in an emulsion like an emulsified body butter or a lotion where that high water content really helps lighten up the overall formulation. And my last strategy is to incorporate hardeners to prevent over application. If you can't use too much of the product, it's hard for it to feel too, too oily or greasy. So something like beeswax or subtle alcohol, stearic acid, blends of those ingredients, vegan waxes like candelilo wax. If the product is really hard, you just can't put too much of it on your skin all at once. Whereas if it's a nice scoopable soft body butter and it's very, very rich and you go in for a great big dollop of it, there's gonna be a lot. 
so you can reduce the chances of kind of feeling really, really greasy by making it hard to put on too much product all at once. So these strategies all either come down to dilute the shea butter or prevent over application. And depending on your formulation, you may want to combine a couple different strategies to create exactly what you want. The next shea buttery consideration you'll want to keep in mind is that some people find it to be sticky. Now I do find that kind of sticky and tacky and creamy exists on a bit of a continuum and exactly where you stop experiencing something as creamy and start experiencing it as like sticky or tacky in like fatty products, that can be a very personal thing. So, you know, I might find something to be very creamy and lovely and you might find it to be sticky or tacky. So just keep in mind that this is very much kind of like spiciness, it's a personal preference thing. When it comes to reducing the tackiness of a formulation, many of the tips I shared for reducing the greasiness also apply, but something else that you can try is try incorporating a small amount of a silicone, so something like dimethicone or cyclomethicone, or a natural silicone alternative like a Lux Glide product or a Lex Feel product, and those can really help reduce feelings of tackiness at pretty low usage rates, like below 5%. Our next formulation consideration is graininess. Now I won't talk about this too much because I recently did an entire video and blog post all about preventing graininess in body butters. So I will link to that in the description box below this video, but definitely make sure you check that out. It's an entire piece of content about why graininess happens and how to prevent it. The last formulation consideration for shea butter is the one that I'd say I get the most questions about, which is how to work with its natural smell. As Gifty talked about, raw handcrafted shea butter does have a nutty smoky scent and the strength of that scent can definitely vary from batch to batch but it's definitely there i found that generally that scent will start to come through in your product if you're using raw shea butter much above 10 percent but of course kind of what else is going on in your formulation that particular batch of shea butter and just how good your nose is will also factor in if your formulation includes enough unrefined shea butter that it's going to smell like unrefined shea butter, I really recommend working with that scent rather than trying to cover it up. In my experience, trying to really cover up the scent of shea butter with lots of fragrances or essential oils results in a product that contains a ton of fragrance or essential oils and still smells like shea butter underneath all of it. So it is much better to choose a scent blend that you think is really going to complement the natural scent of the shea butter rather than just trying to like stuff it down and, and put a lid on it with a lot of essential oil because it just doesn't work. I've had good results blending shea butter with brighter top note essential oils, so things like grapefruit and cardamom. That nutty smoky scent makes a really good base note and so you can really get some lovely things going on by countering that base note with some lighter kind of sparkly scents. If you really want to use a lot of shea butter but you don't want your formulation to smell like shea butter, your best bet is to go with refined shea butter or try a blend of unrefined and refined shea butter so that that scent's just not there to fight with. With those shea buttery tips and tricks under our belt, I would like to share with you 10 of my favorite formulations to make with shea butter. So the first one doesn't really count. I'm calling this like zero on my list of 10, and that's just use it neat. You can massage straight, plain shea butter, you know, into dry elbows, into your hands, you know, kind of whatever appeals to you. And so not only is that very easy, but it's a great way to get to know your shea butter. Shea butter formulation number one on my list is my super simple whipped shea butter. So this formulation really lives up to its name. It's shea butter, starch, a liquid oil, and vitamin E really easy, really simple to make. We're not melting the shea butter, so graininess can't become a problem, assuming your shea butter is not grainy to start with, of course. And we're also incorporating some cornstarch. That's one of the degreasifying tips I shared earlier in the video to make for a lighter product. So you don't need any heat. You just need a set of electric beaters or I suppose a hand whisk and some really good arm muscles and you're off to the races. If you'd like to continue on that whipped cold process theme, I definitely recommend checking out my whipped citrus shea butter. So this formulation is also cold processed and it uses isopropyl myristate to help lighten the feel of the shea butter. This formulation has had great reviews from the people who have made it. And if you don't like citrus, you can definitely use a different essential or fragrance oil, uh, whatever kind of tickles your fancy. I'm feeling very 
this today and I don't know why. <laughs> If you'd like to make a whipped body butter that does require some melting, check out my Autumn Spice Whipped Body Butter. So this blends mango butter, that lighter feeling mango butter we talked about earlier, with shea butter to create a really gorgeous, fluffy, marshmallowy, autumnal scented skin treat. If you love massages, you know, with your partner or your friends or for your business, whatever, I love my cinnamon cocoa massage bars. The ingredient list for this formulation is quite short with just four ingredients. Where it, the magic happens is in the perfect balance of the ingredients and then in how you cool it. So there's definitely, you might need a little bit of practice, you might need a couple tries to get that trace just right, but the finished bars are gorgeous for massage and they smell wonderful. For an extra indulgent skin treat, try my Creamy Oat and Shea Face Mask. I've presented this formulation as a creamy face mask formulation, so something that you can spread on the skin to really deeply moisturize and soften the skin, but you could also use it as a cleansing balm if you wanted to. There's a lot of overlap in those two categories, and so it features rich shea butter and soothing colloidal oatmeal and is really, really lovely. Shea butter's richness makes it really well suited to foot products, so if your feet need some pampering, check out my Eucalyptus Mint Foot Butter. And I do find that the Eucalyptus Mint Essential Oil Blend works quite well with the scent of raw shea butter. If you love rich, ointmenty things, check out Bill's Lavender Salve. So this salve uses Cirebolina, which is a modified beeswax, to get that really neat ointmenty consistency, and of course features a pretty good dose of lavender essential oil. If you'd like to transform your shea butter into a soothing lotion, definitely check out my Hemp and Shea Hand and Body Lotion formulation. I've paired rich shea butter with beautiful green hemp seed oil, soothing colloidal oatmeal, and moisturizing panthenol for a surprisingly lightweight, lovely, deep, rich, moisturizing experience. If you'd like a more decadent shea emulsified experience, definitely check out my Shalo Emulsified Body Butter. This formulation features a pretty hefty dose of shea butter, but it's still really quite light because it is an emulsion. So there is a bunch of water in there to really lighten things up. And then we also get the gorgeous, like emollient, rich, gorgeousness of shea butter with the hydration of water. And then the last formulation I wanted to share today was my lots and lots of clay soap. So this is an oldie but a goodie. The general gist of sort of the idea for this soap was like, I like clay and soap. How much clay can I put in soap? And so hence lots and lots of clay soap. I put in way more clay than I thought I could and it worked beautifully. The fat blend includes a pretty good amount of shea butter and the finished bars are so creamy and lovely, and if you like making soap, you should definitely give it a try. If you would like even more formulations to make with shea butter, I have linked to some of my favorites in the partner blog post linked below this video, or if you go look up shea butter in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia, you'll find a big list of stuff to make with it linked at the bottom of the entry. Thank you again to Baraka Shea Butter for sponsoring this video and the partner blog post. I do have everything written out in the partner blog post, so if you would like links to all the formulations that I shared and more information on some of the strategies that we talked about for formulating, definitely make sure you're going down to the description box below and clicking over to humblebeeandme.com to check that out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.